I'd like to tell you about a country that lies next to the North Sea, a country to which I seem to be very much attached, even if I am looking down on it, quite literally. It's one of the world's most densely populated countries, yet this is not evident from the air. What is apparent, though, is an abundance of green. Why don't you come and join me on this flight? This country is called Belgium, and it's very old. The earliest trace of human presence found here, a primitive stone tool, dates back to prehistory, 800,000 years ago. Belgians. That's how the Roman Emperor and General Julius Caesar referred to the northern inhabitants of Gaul. After he had conquered their territory, though not without resistance, he started to build trade routes. These Roman roads are still evident to this day, such as the one that leads to Tongeren, the town of the legendary Ambiorix, who fought the Romans. Thanks to the roads the Romans built, international trade was able to flourish. Later on, the Belgians became conquerors themselves. From Bouillon, they waged crusades against the Islamites who had conquered Jerusalem. Villages sprang up. From the 10th century on, some of these villages grew into beautiful cities with impressive church spires, such as Tournai and Malines. Liège, the largest city in the south of the country, developed along the River Meuse. Namur was built where the Sambre and Meuse meet. The fact that cities often developed along rivers was no coincidence. Thanks to shipping, they had become trade routes. Port cities of Antwerp and Ghent developed along the banks of the River Scheldt. In the early Middle Ages, Bruges was one of the most important cities in the world. And in the 19th century, Liège was nicknamed the Fiery City thanks to its industrial activity mainly in the steel and glass industries, which flourished at the time. Belgium clearly has a very religious past, evident from its numerous church spires, as well as the number of abbeys. These were not used just for praying, though, Beer and wonderful cheeses were made there, as they still are, but the abbeys were much more. They were also thriving centers of knowledge and literature. Some abbeys did not survive the French Revolution and were razed to the ground.
Belgium boasts a staggering number of castles, most of which are sparkling gems that can only be viewed properly from the air. I am now flying over the castle of Gazbeck with its magnificent Italian gardens. Castles were built in a variety of different periods and styles. They can be Renaissance palaces or medieval forts, and in most cases, they remain in excellent condition. But not all of the time. chateau were only to be found along the Loire, you should definitely visit Belgium. wonderful rolling countryside of Brabant, along the linguistic border, a remarkable monument can be found in Waterloo. A lion on top of an artificial hill marks the spot where, in 1815, a coalition of European troops beat Napoleon's army. The vanquished French emperor was exiled to the island of St. Helena. Wars were simple in those days. The Dutch king, William I, who ruled the country at the time, had the monument erected in honor of his son, the Prince of Orange, who was wounded during the battle. Brussels, 15 years on. In 1830, following an opera-inspired revolution against Dutch rule, the state of Belgium was established. It was to be a constitutional monarchy, with a king as head of state. The country is divided up into two main linguistic communities, one Dutch and one French, although German is also spoken in a very small region. In the second half of the 20th century, the state structure was overhauled, and Belgium was given a federal government. Belgium's second king, Leopold II, wanted to make his mark on the country's history with splendid buildings, most of which can be found in Brussels. They date back to his time, and they rival those in any other major European city. In his own grounds at the castle of Laken, he had beautiful greenhouses erected and started an impressive collection of exotic plants. Centre in Inu boasts four lift locks for shipping, incredible 19th century constructions which UNESCO has placed on the World Heritage List. The polders of West Flanders played a major role in world history, 
for it is there that hundreds of thousands of soldiers died in the trenches during the First World War. The charming city of Ypres was flattened, as were the surrounding villages. For the first time in history, poisonous gas, known as Ypres, was used in the battle. The river that I'm crossing right now, the Aser, featured prominently in the last throes of the war. The Belgian king, Albert I, had the locks of the river Aser in Newport opened. Gradually, the area where the Germans had taken up position was flooded. This marked the beginning of the end of the war. There are museums dotted around the whole of this region, and sections of the trenches, such as the so-called Trench of Death, have been preserved for future generations. Another image typical of this region are the military cemeteries with white headstones, the best known being Tyne Cot Cemetery in Passendale. During the Second World War II, tough battles were fought on Belgian soil. Right at the very end of this war, the Germans tried to turn the tide and launch their Ardennes offensive. In the Battle of Bastogne, the Allied forces managed to bring the German offensive to a standstill. However, there were more than 100,000 casualties on both sides. As a token of gratitude to the Americans who lost tens of thousands of troops there, Belgium had a war memorial built in Bastogne. Nineteen fifty eight. The Second World War seemed to have been forgotten. Brussels held an impressive World Fair for which a unique monument was erected, the Atomium, reflecting mankind's optimistic view of future development. The south of the country owed its prosperity to heavy industry, chiefly the coal industry in the region surrounding Charleroi. For a long time, the steel industry was a pillar of the economy in Wallonia, although economic activities in that area are now taking a different direction. What is striking, certainly when the country is viewed from above, is the impressive infrastructure. Belgium boasts an incredibly dense network of motorways and railways. The government is making every effort to divert freight traffic to canals as much as possible, for these are eminently well placed to establish perfect links with the ports, including foreign ports. The port of Antwerp is a world ranking port, ranked fifth in the world, and an important artery of the Belgian economy. Container transport has been increasing for years, and docks and mooring places are still being added to this day. In the major port of Zeebrugge, a growing number of cars are being loaded and unloaded. Belgium's unique lock lifts process thousands of ships every year. With the high-speed train, though, you can get to Paris or London in next to no time. And the number of passengers at the national airport of Zaventem continues to grow year on year.
As I've said, this is a small and densely populated country with an extensive road network and lots of industry. Yet there's still a good deal left over for nature and agriculture. And opinion polls show that people want to keep it that way. In many places, this agricultural activity produces attractive landscapes. Typical are the small, oddly shaped plots of land, often in patterns that hark back to the Middle Ages. Perhaps for the very reason that nature and greenery are threatened by economic activity, concern about the environment has grown enormously. In recent years, the government has invested more and more in green areas, so that Belgium is now being given more protected nature reserves, many having been lost in the recent past. Every Belgian is born with a brick in his stomach, the saying goes, and all the raw material for building can be found just under the surface. Heavy industry is mainly to be found above the surface, for example, this steel giant in the Ghent region. This is good news for the car assembly sector. Every year, our major manufacturers produce some one million cars. It's not only Zaventem that handles increasing numbers of passengers. Regional airports are also gaining ground. From the air, it's mainly the large businesses that are visible. But this country can thank numerous small and medium-sized enterprises for its prosperity, as these are where the majority of employees find jobs. And what do all these people get up to during the weekend? Well, if it's sunny, it seems that they all head for the coast, even though it's only 65 kilometers long. Apparently, it's not just the Caribbean that attracts cruise ships. The southeast of the country also does its bid to draw the tourists. There's hardly a young Belgian who hasn't enjoyed a camping holiday in the Ardennes. At the risk of repeating myself, I'm flying above some wind turbines, more evidence of growing environmental awareness. Since Belgium has 18 universities and some 50 colleges of higher education, there must be quite a few bright sparks who are looking at how the environment can be reconciled with the economy, among other things. The historic town of Louvain hosts the country's oldest university, dating back as it does to the 15th century. Since Belgium has no fewer than eight university hospitals, universities and medicine go hand in hand.
Brussels is not only the capital of this country, but also of the whole of Europe in a way, for this is where the EU's largest decision-making bodies are based. And as if this was not enough, NATO also has its headquarters in Brussels. Belgians like to go cycling at the weekend. And even if they don't actively participate, they like to watch cycle rallies, which are never far away. From early spring to late autumn, there are cycling races virtually every week, and they can watch the main ones live on television. Small wonder that Belgium has produced so many cycling champions. now about to land. I've tried to give you a detailed description of this intriguing country, but of course, I've had to leave a lot out. A word of advice before we part. When you visit, you might notice that Belgians can be rather critical of their own country. But all in all, they like living here. Because believe me, in the main, they know how to enjoy life.